Baie dankie, Antoinette. Uh, my oor is net nooit die rechte grootte vir die goed nie. En uh, die vrystaters noem hulle ons blik oor, so is dalk iets daarmee te noem. Nou, as hy nou, ja, baie welkom hier volgend, en is weer eens een voorrecht om hier saam met julle te wees. Ek denk nou, vooral om het beroende hier is, is het sommer warmer hier in Pretoria ook. Um, is een lekker klimaat wat julle hier so het. Nou, aan die vrystaat begin dinge al so wees dat die ou jou huwelijksprobleme vroegtijdig moet uitsorteer. Dat hy nou nie onnodig koud kry in die aande en so aan nie. En, uh, dis ook om ek my vrou saangebring het hierdie keer. Want die ou moet die eenheid hee terwyl jy terugbeweeg. Want hy kou is strategies, baie slim om een wicht te drijf tussen jou en jou vrou. Uh, ons vertrou rechtig dat die heren ons sien met sy teenwoordigheid. En ons is opgewonde om ook verochend hier saam te wees, om te luister na wat uh, dominee Ruben met ons gaan deel. So kom ons verklaar saam ons afhankelijkheid voor die heren. En ons is in afwachting dat die heren ons ook ontmoet en met ons deel wat hy in sy hart het. So kom ons bid saam. Ons hulp is van die heren wat jimmel en aarde gemaakt het en wat getrouw bly tot in eeuwigheid. Amen. Liewe gemeente, genade en vrede vir julle van God onze Vader en ons Heere Jesus Christus dier die krachtige werking van die Heilige Gees. Amen. Kom ons bid saam. Ja, Vader, ons Heere, dat die woord ons in Galasiers leer, dat omdat ons die kinders geword het in Christus, Gee u vir ons die gees, en dit laat ons uitroep, Abba Vader. Dank u vir die gees wat in ons woon. Wat ons bewus maak vir die feit dat u die koning is van alles. Wat ons bewus maak van die feit dat ons die kinders is, en dat ons die voorrecht het om in die teenwoordigheid te leef. Dank u vir die wonder van Jesus Christus. Ons koning, ons broer, wat gekom het om al ons sondes weg te neem dat ons vandag die voorrecht het om heilig voor u te mag staan, nie omdat ons so sondeloos is nie, maar omdat u ons so heilig gemaakt het, nie op grond van wat ons gedoen het nie, maar wat u gedoen het, ons eer u daarvoor, dank u dat ons gerechtig is, om in u allerheiligste in te gaan, in elke oomlik van die dag, in u teenwoordigheid te leef, so ook vandag. Ja, Heere, ons lied, is een uitnodiging wat sê, kom, oorskeper gees, Kom leer ons en lei ons in hierdie waarheid. Ons wil graag vandag in die waarheid verder gelei word. Ons wil die afwachting dat u ons sal leer wat u wil en ons moet verstaan vir vandag. So dat ons vandag en morgen en elke dag kan gaan leef tot die Heer. Ons bid die Seen oor Ruben Safari wat hy is, as hy die woord gaan kom bedien. Kom lei om, kom vul om met die geest so dat hy die woord aan ons sal bring so dat ons duidelijk sal verstaan wat hij van ons verwacht. Wil jy ons ook dier die geest kom inspireer, so dat ons gehoor kan gee in die woord. Ons bid dat hy dit vir ons sal oopbreek, en dat dit in ons harte ontvankelijk sal wees daarvoor. Help ons om met te geniet om vandag hier saam te wees, om opgewonde te wees oor wie is, en opgewonde te wees oor wie ons in u geword het. Ja, hier is die laaste stier, my sondag, help ons om rechtig weer te snap vandag, wat de rol dit is wat ons moet speel. Dat ons nie net hier is om sondag by mekaar te kom hier, maar dat ons hier is om een verskil te maak. Kom bestuur ons verder met hierdie dag ook, om dit te kan verstaan. Ons eer hier, dat ons die wonder van die woord het, wat ons kan lees. Ons eer hier, dat ons die wonder van die geest het, wat ons help om het te verstaan. En ons dank hier, dat hier ons lei om hierdie leven te kan gaan leef. Seen ons dan nou hier. Jesus' naam. Amen. We have then the privilege to welcome uh, Reverend Ruben Safari here to come and share with us the word of God. May God bless you, Reverend, and may you experience his presence and his guidance. Thank yeah. you very much. Welcome. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior. Today, I feel a privilege to be present among you 
and especially to have this opportunity to share God's message with you in this morning service. Let us read the scripture as it's written in the book of Acts, chapter 8. We start by verse 26 till verse 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the, she the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak on his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look here is the water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotas and traveled about preaching the gospel in all towns until he reached Caesarea. I have read from the NIV version Bible. The, the text verses are the verses 26 and 27a, 29 to 30, and 39 to 40. The theme of the sermon is obedience is the main key in spreading the gospel. This theme will be explained to you through the life of Philip, who appears as the dominant character in the whole chapter 8 of Acts, even if we didn't read it entirely. First of all, we have to know who was Philip. We can also ask us, what was he doing before we saw him in this red text? Regarding the first question, Philip was one of the seven 
chosen among men disciples who were living with apostles in Jerusalem and he became deacons he, he became one of the deacons in charge of food distribution in the early church for more information you can you will read maybe at home at 6 from verse 1 to verse 6 this choice was based on the three following criteria to have a good reputation to be full of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that is taken from New King James Version only two men Stephen and Philip from the seven continued to appear in this book of Acts as they played a major role in chapter 6 7 and chapter 8 concerning the second question just after the execution of Stephen in the book of Acts chapter 7 the severe persecution of believers followed in Jerusalem and pushed many Christians to flee to different areas and regions. So, Philip fled to Samaria where he preached the name of Jesus Christ and many Samaritans believed in him. God used Philip mightily in performing miracles in the lives of Samaritans as those who possessed demons were delivered and those who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Briefly, Philip was very busy in serving the congregation he started in Samaria after his move from Jerusalem. Let us now start with our theme. In verse 26, verse 26, if I can read it again, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip the man who was busy enough in leading a big congregation in Samaria is called by an angel of the Lord to make a quite long distance from Samaria to the road which went down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip was indicated the place where to go, but he didn't know the purpose or the reason he had to move. However, Philip, in his obedience, decided to follow God's instruction without contestation, hesitation, or dissatisfaction. Philip, as a man full of the Holy Spirit, knew that God has the right purpose and the right motive to send him to, the, to that locality. In verse... Uh, 27. On his way, Philip saw an Ethiopian eunuch, a very important person in charge of the treasury of Ethiopia. He was confirming from he was coming from Jerusalem to worship and he was going back to his country. In verse 29 and 30. Philip now received a clear instruction from the Spirit of God to go <coughs> and to stay near the chariot which transported the Ethiopian man. As Philip responded promptly to God's order, he heard the man reading in a book of Isaiah the prophet. Then, then Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? Because the Holy Spirit was leading Philip, everything moved smoothly in the conversation between him and 
the Ethiopian. Verse 31 shows the honesty and the humility of the eunuch in the response to Philip. Said, he said, how can I unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Verse 32 and 33 contain the scriptures the Ethiopian man was reading and he was totally confused in its content. Fortunately, God organized the meeting between the Ethiopian man and Philip. So Philip started to explain to him the good news about Jesus Christ in connection with the passage he was reading. Because the eunuch fully understood Philip's explanations, he trusted the Lord and was baptized. The unique Ethiopian received in his heart Jesus Christ because of Philip's obedience. The salvation of the Ethiopian was planned by God himself, and Philip was his agent to accomplish his plan or to execute his project. Dear brothers and sisters, the Ethiopian can represent a big number of people in this region. He can also represent a big number of people in this country. He can also represent a big number of people in this continent. He can also represent a big number of people in the world in general. In the same way, Philip can represent all the people who are willing to serve the Lord with their total commitment. In these days, people are putting, the, the, <coughs> are putting first their own interests and God's ones in the second position. What could happen if Philip put his interests in the first position instead of God's one. The Ethiopian could continue to live with his unchanged, unchanged heart. Verse 39 to 14, the spirit of the Lord separated the Ethiopian man with Philip in a miraculous way. Philip was taken away by the spirit and he found himself in Azotas, one of the towns situated on the shore of the sea. Through the leading of the spirit of the Lord, Philip did no longer return to the congregation he started in Samaria, but he was directed to other towns where the gospel was urgently needed. He pursued his mission of spreading the gospel news of Jesus Christ in all the towns between Azotas and the big city of Caesarea. Caesarea was uh, located on the shore of the sea and was the headquarters of Roman governors. The city of Caesarea was dominantly occupied by Gentiles, and Philip was established there for the rest of his life. It was the first mission known among Gentiles led by Philip. The Bible commentators think that Cornelius, the Roman centurion, who was also based in Caesarea, was in contact with the gospel because of Philip who was busy evangelizing that city for 25 years. The journey of Philip in serving the Lord is very long and very successful. He started in Jerusalem 
where he worked as an ordained deacon in charge of the food distribution in the early church. Then he was the founder of the first congregation in Samaria. After that, he went to the south of Jerusalem where he spiritually brought to the genuine faith the Ethiopian eunuch. Then he continued to Azotas from where he spread the gospel from town to town until he was established permanently in Caesarea where he did the evangelization ministry for many years. Which lesson can we learn today from this sermon? Maybe many of us think that the lesson is given to ministers. Yes, I agree that they are concerned as well as every congregation member and even the whole congregation. On the side of ministers, Philip can be our model in terms of obedience, which is still found as the main key in spreading or proclaiming the gospel. Through his obedience, Philip brought the gospel to various places. Philip, in his obedience, responded effectively to the Great Commission as given by our Lord Jesus Christ, as we read it in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If God help us to imitate Philip's obedience, we can also reach many places in which the good news of Jesus Christ is still unknown. On the side of the congregation members, you are the most indicated agents to advance the gospel in providing for the needs of the congregation in general and the needs of God's servants in particular. The finances for the work in your congregation will increase if you are willing to apply Philip's obedience. Obviously, there are no NGOs which will come to support the projects of your congregation. The church's projects or activities will be supported 100% by yourselves. Don't expect those who will come from outside to organize your church, to take care of her, or to meet her needs. All those activities are laid before you as the congregation members. If you pray to God and ask him to grant you with Philip's obedience, certainly your commitment for God's ministry will be more effective. On the side of the congregation, I'm very satisfied that you did, you, did, <coughs> you did not plan to serve the Lord at the same place, but you decided to spread the gospel through four projects. You sustain financially and materially inside the country as well as in other countries like Zambia, Mozambique, and Burundi. I am totally convinced that it is a hard work or even a burden to support missionaries in their needs in order to be more effective in their mission. But on our side as supported missionaries, we are very grateful for your commitment to God's work in our localities as well as in our countries. Once again, may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as ministers, as congregation members, and as the whole congregation in spreading the gospel through your obedience to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
you love so much your servants, your congregations, members, and the congregation in general. Lord, we have uh, followed the sermon regarding the obedience. Sometimes we are disobedient. We don't follow your voice. We neglect it sometimes. We avoid it sometimes. But Lord, we ask you to help us to be like Philip. Because through our obedience, we will be more effective in spreading the gospel. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderlijk. Mag ons allemaal geïnspireerd wees om uh, die lucht van die Heere te laat skyn en tot sy eer te kan leef. Vanavond is ons, uh, gaan ons verder ook praat oor wat is Godse plan om Zuid-Afrika te verander. Hoe gaan hy Zuid-Afrika verander? So die van julle wat dit ook kan bijwoon, julle is welkom. Maar kom ons wees opgewonden oor die feit dat hierdie God oor wie ons gehoor het, wat uh, Ruben van ons van gepraat het, graag saam met ons wil uitgaan hier vandag zodat so zij sy grootheid dier ons naar voren kan kom. Ontvang nou die Seen van die Heere. Die Heere sal jylle Seen en jylle beskerm. Die Heere sal tot jylle redding kom en jylle genadig wees. Die Heere sal jylle gebede verhoor en aan jylle vrede geef.